Well, I guess it's that time. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are ready to get going. I think we've got everybody here. So let's get this party started. So thank you so much for joining us today. We sure appreciate you taking the time out of all of your busy days. Today's webinar is part of our ongoing series of educational training webinars offered as a free professional courtesy by Clearly IP. And today's event is all about the fundamentals of SIP trunking, a SIP trunking 101. I'll be your presenter today. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Bree Fernie. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Clearly IP, and I've been alongside the team here since last year. I'm just loving it. We're having so much fun. I especially love these webinars that we're trying to do uh, weekly or bi-weekly. Today, I've got Tony with me. Tony, how are you today? I'm doing really good, Bree. Thanks for having me. Well, thanks for being here. So Tony always joins us because I need a little help with the live demo and the Q&A. So he's going to show us live how you go into a SIP trunking store, get a SIP trunk configured and working. And he's going to be doing this by using our Clearly IP trunking platform. So this will be a great example for everyone to see just how easy it really is to get working with SIP trunks. SIP is quite the buzzword lately. So we felt what better subject matter to educate and train on a topic that our customers are asking us about on a regular basis. SIP trunking really is taking the business world by storm, especially in the past year. And no matter what size of business or sector, companies utilize SIP trunking for many of its advantages. Our team at Clearly IP gets the chance to chat with customers every day who are excited about the possibilities that SIP trunking offers can bring for their business. But the average person is generally unfamiliar with how it works or what to expect. I'm constantly asked, Bree, what is a SIP trunk? So we thought it would be an excellent opportunity for us to explain some of SIP trunking's real benefits. This will be useful for people to understand the aspects of SIP trunking better and why they should take advantage of the services. So today's gonna be in the format of a what, why, and how on SIP trunking. Let's get going. So SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol. SIP trunking is a method of sending voice and other unified communication services over the internet. It works with an IP-enabled PBX, private branch exchange. SIP trunking replaces your old phone lines. It replaces traditional telephone lines, like analog lines, POTS lines, or even PRIs, T1s. And before SIP became a popular and reliable method of transmitting voice signals, all of our telephone calls were prim primarily carried over the public switch telephone network, PSTN. The PSTN is the network of the copper phone lines we traditionally associate with the telephone. The PSTN is a circuit switch network which requires a physical connection between two points to complete a call. Whereas SIP trunks are virtual phone lines that enable users to make and receive phone calls over the internet versus over copper lines. So to anyone in the world really with a phone number, SIP trunks utilize a packet switch network in which voice calls are broken down into digital packets and sent across the network to the final destination. So the old fashioned public switch telephone network or PSDN with lines will soon be a thing of the past. Today's telephony is moving away from PSTN connections into the world of flexible and modern SIP trunking. Now, the world's most popular telecom providers are already phasing out old functionality solutions and have begun to make the move towards IP, making SIP trunk an inevitable upgrade solution. So it's not really a matter of if, it's going to be a matter of when you'll make the move to SIP trunks. So what exactly are SIP channels? Well, each SIP trunk supports SIP channels. A SIP channel is equivalent to one incoming or outgoing call. A SIP trunk can hold an unlimited number of channels, so users only need one SIP trunk, no matter how many concurrent calls they expect. The number of channels required depends on how many calls the business will make at any one time. 
So I'm gonna give you an example of this. So I'll give you an example of SIP channels and the return on investment. Cost savings and improved technology is typically the number one priority for businesses. So an example of this, let's use a company with 50 extensions, so 50 people, 50 phones. And we know traditionally that this customer would typically need a 10 channel T1 PRI service, which allows 10 simultaneous calls in and out. For most of the time, they peak at those 10 calls. But there are times that they get more than 10 calls and those callers, if they try on an 11th line, they simply won't get through. A 10 channel PRI can range from anywhere from $500 to a thousand per month, depending on the term. Here in Vancouver, British Columbia, a 10 channel PRI is usually around $650 a month, and that's based on a three-year contract. So 650 a month over a three-year contract, that equates to 7,800 a year, which equates to $23,400 over three years. So now let's look at the cost for a SIP trunk instead. A three-year SIP trunk contact, contract with Clearly IP for 10 channels would be $17.99 a channel or $179.99 a month versus that pure IT1 of $650 per month. And the beauty with SIP trunking and with the Clearly IP platform is that you buy the 10 channels you need at that $179 per month, and then you can also pay per minute when you need to burst up for peak times if you're getting more than those 10 calls. So if an 11th call comes in, your system will automatically burst up so you can receive that call. So 10 channels is $179.99 per month, plus let's say you add in 5,000 minutes of bursting for those crazy busy times. So 5,000 minutes times 0 0.09 cents per minute is another $45 per month. So you're looking at $225 a month for 10 SIP trunks with bursting capability versus that $650 per month for PRIT1. So that's a potential $425 in savings per month. That's over $5,000 per year and nearly $15,000 over a three-year term. So this is where it really starts to make sense on the return on investment and cost savings when making the transition to SIP trunks. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about that bursting because I often get asked, what is bursting? So with SIP trunks, you can burst up. So if at certain times you get more calls than normal, a lot of times people need to have one, have more PRI lines, because it isn't as flexible. So typically you sign up for PRI T1 and that's a fixed number of lines. The beautiful thing about SIP is if you notice your call volume going up, then you can burst up or add another channel within minutes versus having to add a second PRI trunk if you do have PRI T1 lines with more channels, which is at a substantial increased fixed cost per month. And you'll also need the hardware to accommodate, don't forget, you need to make sure that your system has either the card and the licensing and capacity to accommodate additional PRI T1 trunks. Plus, SIP will include most of your long distance within a large footprint in North America and super low rates for international calling. So there's gonna be significant savings there as well. For those of you that grew up only having access to copper lines, this can actually feel like magic when you first make the change. And we've here at Clearly, we've got a formula to help determine how many channels, aka lines you're gonna need. So we're always here to help you figure this out if you need some assistance. Okay, the next question I'm asked is, what's the difference between SIP and VoIP? Although SIP and VoIP are often used interchangeably, they are not the same thing. VoIP stands for Voice Over Internet Protocol. It's a broad term that covers any phone calls made over the internet. It includes a group of protocol technologies of which SIP is an example. SIP is one of those specific protocols that enable VoIP. So all SIP is voice, but not all VoIP is SIP. So we understand now that for the uninitiated SIP trunks are telephone line trunks that are delivered over an IP network using the SIP 
protocol. And using this method, telecom service and VoIP providers can connect multiple channels to a customer PBX. DIDs, or pronounced DIDs, direct inward dial numbers and phone numbers can be linked to the same SIP trunk and numbers can often be ported into a SIP trunk too. So back to the customer scenario example I just gave you on PRI T1 lines versus trunks. You can also have an unlimited number of phone numbers with SIP trunking versus PRI can only support a certain bank or number of DIDs or phone numbers. So if you have one SIP trunk, you can have literally unlimited number of phone numbers. The channels do not matter. You could have a thousand phone numbers on one SIP trunk if you want it. You can also have unlimited number of phone numbers with SIP trunking versus PRI can only support a certain bank of DIDs or phone numbers. So SIP trunks offer a range of unique benefits over PSTN-based solutions. We're gonna go over those unique benefits in a moment, but it's really important that when you're looking for a SIP trunking provider that you ask yourself these six important questions. Number one, what is the infrastructure and what is the global reach? Two, what is the porting process and associated cost for porting your phone numbers? That's a super important question to ask. Do they support E911 dispatchable locations? Super important these days with everyone working remotely. Are they Carrie's Law and Raybomb Act compliant? What is the service support? Can you call them if you need help? or are they online chat only? And do, do they, does the provider support an admin portal so you can manage your own services? That's an important feature for most businesses. You just wanna be able to go online and add a phone number or add a channel, whatever you want on your own within minutes. Okay, I mentioned Kerry's Law and Raybomb Act. Let's talk about that as it's very important to know. Those primary requirements include Eliminate dialing nine for your 911 calls. So you wanna work with a provider that does not require that nine or a prefix when dialing 911. Uh, next, you wanna ensure your provider has the ability with emergency notifications to be sent to designated extensions for personnel, alerting them to the emergency location. Confirm that the SIP trunk provider can route 911 calls to be transmitted to the appropriate first responder with that dispatchable location. Not all SIP trunk providers are Carrie's Law and Raybomb Act compliant, more so in the US than in Canada, and this is really necessary, especially with these given times and remote workers. We actually held a webinar on Carrie's Law and the Raybomb Act a couple months ago for our partners and customers. We recognize the importance of being proactive with technology and compliance deadlines. So here we don't put our heads in the sand with these type of things and just hope for the best. These laws are truly for the protection and safety of all of us. So SIP trunk providers had to be Carrie's Law compliant in the USA by February 16th of last year and the Raybomb Act went into effect this year on February 16th, 2021 for on-premise systems and the same date next year, February 16th, 2022 for hosted cloud off-premise systems. So as a SIP trunking provider, we can assist you with being compliant. If you're a customer using SIP trunks, make sure your provider is compliant as this could really negatively impact your services. It's as easy as asking the questions, are you Carrie's Law and Raybomb Act compliant? Do we have our E911 dispatchable location set up on our system? and confirm you can dial 911 on your system without having to dial 9 first. If your people are in an emergency trying to call 911, they need to know they can make that call and not have to memorize pressing 9 to get that call to go out. So let's move on to the why, why you should be utilizing SIP trunking for business. So we all now understand that SIP trunks are telephone line trunks that are delivered over an IP network using the SIP protocol. And that using this method, telecom providers can connect multiple channels to a customer's PBX. DIDs, DIDs, and phone numbers can be linked to the same SIP trunk and numbers can be ported into SIP trunk too. So they offer even more benefits and unique benefits over PSTM-based solutions than I've already mentioned. 
Let's talk about lower costs. Lower costs for monthly line rental thanks to fewer lines installed at your office. Lower call charges thanks to competition among SIP trunk providers. Some SIP trunks even offer unlimited call volume. Better customer service offered through more geographical and international numbers so businesses can easily and efficiently add numbers to their SIP solutions and terminate them too. Since customers can contact companies with greater ease, this often means that sales increase as well. SIP trunks aren't bound to a location, which means that you can move offices without having to change your phone numbers. You can eliminate VoIP gateways as all phone calls arrive via IP. So this means no extra conversion and can really maximize quality too. Modern IP PBXs and unified communication solutions offer customers enhanced productivity, better sales, improve mobility. Connecting your IP PBX to a SIP trunking solution is far easier than using old PSTN lines. It's easier to include additional channels on your SIP trunks to handle increased calls compared to increasing your hard lines. With SIP trunks, you can select the perfect number of channels for your unique needs. On the other hand, with ISDN and traditional phone lines, you'd have to choose a specific number of lines and those were fixed and you had to pay for that every month. Lastly, unlimited access to global phone numbers for your business and team. So if you have offices or personnel all over the world, or you wanna market a local number in a specific area or region, you'll have access to those phone numbers any place, anywhere. Some of the features that make our SIP trunking so valuable include on-demand cloud SIP trunking, so you can start calling quickly without the complexity of multiple configuration steps or the inconvenience of waiting days for changes to be effective. Failover and redundancy, so we provide failover and redundancy to your trunking to circumvent PBX, network, and or data center outages. We have an extensive self-service dashboard, which will allow you to manage most aspects of your service. You can add DIDs, call pass, users, et cetera, with ease. We support toll-free voice. You'll be able to easily add toll-free numbers to your business or port existing numbers to our service to enjoy our low monthly inbound toll-free rates. We make number porting super easy. We know your existing phone numbers are so important to you, so it's so simple to port your numbers in. International calling is supported. They, it can be added or removed to any account as needed, and again, E911, seamless E911 integration that provides system integrators and end users compliance and peace of mind with those introduced Carey's Law and Raybaum Act requirements. So a lot of benefits. I hope I've outlined pretty much the key ones that I talk to with customers. The only other things that you might want to think about are platform compatibility. You want to make sure that your service, like our Clearly IP service, will work with all major IP PBXs and open source PBX projects. Just about any SIP enabled device can be configured to work with our Clearly IP trunking services. You want phone numbers virtually everywhere. At Clearly, we offer a large database of phone numbers across rate centers in the US. Canada and 80 other countries. You can use your SIP trunking services, our Clearly IP services, with your existing hardware. We can connect to existing legacy systems, PBXs, ATAs, and even soft phones. We have a tier one redundant network, so Clearly IP trunks are backed by a fully geo redundant infrastructure providing industry-leading business continuity to your business communications. We are scalable. We have scalable SIP trunks so that you pay only for connections you need without the risk of rejecting calls by enabling on-demand capacity. So if your call volumes increase, you're still covered. And hey, if you wanna give it a try, we offer a free trial so that customers don't have to make business decisions in a vacuum. Give the service a try before you buy to make a decision on your needs. So we've addressed how SIP trunking can give you the power to enhance your business experience. Once you've chosen a provider, hopefully us, <laughs> you can choose a dedicated internet line for your SIP trunk. So SIP trunk simply can go on your in-place high speed. Since many firewalls can handle several WAN connections and internet lines are often low cost, 
a separate VoIP connection can be a great way to enhance the quality of your VoIP calls. This process can keep your voice traffic separated from data traffic. However, the outcome of your choices will depend largely on the cost of your upgrades and your network infrastructure. We can certainly help you look at that and determine the best route. Remember, you can also upgrade your PBX to an on-premise IP PBX. Unlike with PSTN lines, which are often connected to hardware-based PBX solutions, an IP PBX can offer you an easy to manage and flexible solution. So if you're not ready, you're not quite ready to go to the cloud or a hosted platform, which includes your zip trunks, then why not consider upgrading your services on site, on premise, to an on premise IP PBX and leverage the benefits and flexibility, modern refinements that only IP and SIP trunking can bring. Another part of our Clearly IP trunking platform is our fax solution. We call it SendFax.2. And I want to touch on that because it's a great solution that most of our customers don't realize we offer as part of our enhanced trunking platform. SendFax.2 is really great for businesses wanting to move away from physical faxing. It's a complete total fax platform. One of the most important factors with the faxing is ROI. So you might ask, what kind of return on investment does switching to virtual or electronic faxing hold? Let's go over some of those. Uh, reducing the cost of a new fax machine, maintenance of the fax machine. If it breaks, it has to be fixed or replaced. And then you can't be faxing when your machine isn't working for you. Let's talk about the cost for a dedicated phone line connected to the fax. So this cost would be eliminated completely and your additional long distance charges will be either eliminated or significantly reduced. Having a physical fax can be a complete bottleneck. You can only send or receive it one fax at a time. And if an additional fax is being sent to the same recipient, you're gonna get a busy signal. Plus redundancy, it's just one more specialized item to buy toner for and time and efficiency. There will always be a bottleneck one waiting to send multiple faxes to multiple recipients. Paper jams happen, they don't need to. So SendFax.2 is a great solution. And when you put two or three of those reasons together, the choice is pretty clear. Our SendFax.2 platform supports inbound faxing, fax to email, it, we have an awesome online portal where you can easily configure inbound email delivery from any fax-enabled T.38 numbers available in most North America regions. Inbound faxes can be delivered up to two email addresses. So for example, you could send to your receptionist or a specific department to manage and distribute your inbound faxes. You can define up to two email addresses that will be sent to the inbound fax on a per DID basis. SendFax.2 also supports outbound faxing. So email to fax, it, it is a phenomenal solution, very easy to use. You take outbound emails, you send it to the fax number at SendFax.2 and it'll convert to a fax. It's a huge benefit. You can re it has rebrandable email alerts and even the SendFax.2 domain for resellers. There is no e-fax portal. It relies 100% on email for faxing. Fax CDR showing all sent and received faxes in the store. And you have the ability to set a password that all fax PDFs are encrypted with at a per group level. How do you send a fax? It's really a easy three-step process. Um, we're going to show you live as well, but step one, you create your new email, you attach your documents, the body of the email will serve as your cover page. Step two, you enter the email address in the to field, which will be the fax number at sendfax.2, and then you hit send. Your email will be converted to a fax. You will even receive a status delivery confirmation. I know that's super important to everyone. So now you can even use your multifunction printers to send and receive faxes without needing a traditional phone line. If it has an internet connection, then you can fax to and from it. You don't need to be a networking or telecom expert 
to take advantage of SIP trunking for your business, we do recommend choosing a good partner like us that will help walk you through that implementation process and support you as the needs of your business do change over time. We, as I mentioned, offer free trials. You can fire up a SIP trunk in our store literally in the matter of seconds. I invite you to try it. It's really as easy as one, two, three. And this is where I'm gonna hand things over to Tony. He's gonna step in and do a live demo. Tony, why don't you show everyone how easy it is to configure and fire up a SIP trunk on our Clearly IP trunking portal? Sounds good, Bree. Okay, so I'm over in our trunking portal, so trunking.clearlyap.com. Uh, if you don't have an account, you can create one on demand to order service. And once you get logged in, you'll um, be on the main homepage here, and you'll get a menu bar at the top. Um, we're not going to spend a lot of time in the menu bar, but we have information about our account. Our account is who our company is, our organization. So under account, organization, we can see what our company name is, what our customer ID number is with Clearly IP, uh, your account's been verified, your website, your phone number, and who your sales rep is with Clearly IP. We can see billing information. So we can see we're billed on the 24th day of each month and we have terms of 15 days from the invoice date and this account happens to have a credit limit of $7,000 with a five day grace period. Uh, we can see our billing address and shipping address. We can even uh, change that. So if our billing address ever changes, we can hit the little edit. We can update that address and that updates our systems. And then down below, we can see different types of contact groups. We have four different types of contact groups. We have technical contacts, billing, porting, and sales. So for each contact group, you can add one or more of your contacts or users that you've created in our system. So for example, we can see Mike Dunn and Clearly AP Training are the technical contacts for this organization. If Mike wasn't actually a technical contact, we could hit the X here and take them out. And now it's just Clearly AP Training. If we need to add a different contact, we can pick from any of the contacts on our system and hit add. And now they'll add it to the technical. Same with billing, same with porting, same with sales. Uh, the, the billing contact one's important. That's who's gonna get the invoices every month. And any reminders of past due invoices will be any of the, the contacts that you defined here. The next section is the actual contacts. So under account contacts, this is where you actually manage the contacts of your system of your account. So we can see we have three contacts and the first two are allowed to log in to our portal. The last one is not. So it's a contact uh, that's been created and it's been set up, um, but they're not allowed to log into the portal. So sometimes you might create contacts that are like a billing contact, but you don't let them log in. For each contact, you can choose if you want to allow login and then set a password. Uh, invoices will show a history of all of our invoices and it'll show you whether they've been paid or not. And if they're not paid and you're a credit card customer, which is the default for all new customers, um, you can pay any unpaid invoices from here just by hitting the select button. If they're unpaid, it would let you hit them and hit the button up here that says pay zero. It'd be pay one selected invoice or two or three or however many you selected. And you can view the invoice. So if I want to view an invoice, I can click here and it will open up the invoice and let me see it. And from here, you can print it or download it. CDRs will show me all the inbound outbound calls and faxes. So we can pick a date range and it defaults to a month. Um, and it's gonna show me all my locations. Um, in our world, the location is a separate PVX. Um, we could filter. So if we only wanted to see calls from a specific location, we could filter to that specific location if we wanted to. So we can pick this location or maybe these two. And now it'll filter just to those two locations. Um, we can see the date and time, the from number, the to number, what location it's for, what type of call path it used, whether it used a metered or our included call paths where you don't pay per minute, or maybe it was international, or maybe it was fax. So this unlimited domestic tells us it was using our built-in call path that we don't have a permanent charge on. So we'll see it was 16 seconds and zero build because it was included with the call paths. If it was a metered call, um, we'd see what the cost was. These CDRs um, get populated within 20, 30 seconds of hanging up a call. It'll show up here. 
So it's almost real time and you can see all the cost as it's happening of all your calls. Uh, payment method, so if you're a customer that has credit cards on file, um, this is where you would add additional credit cards or delete them if they're expired that we use for um, when your service renews every month. And then payment history will show you all the payments applied to your account. We don't have any on this free one, but it'll show payments and what invoice the payment was tied to. And this is important because if you've got multiple locations with us and they all renew on the same day, we're gonna do one charge in your credit card for multiple invoices. Here's where you can actually see what invoices each of those charges were for. So it's a great way of balancing out your credit card statements to go see what invoices each payment was applied to. So that's kind of your organizational level information or account level. Then we get into the actual products and services. So most people only have a single location. In our example here, we have a whole bunch of them because this is a test account. Um, a location, basically the easiest way to describe a location is a unique PBX. So in, in the end customer world, you usually only have one PBX, so you're gonna have one location with us. We can add a new location here real time. So we can hit the add new location button and we're gonna pick SIP trunking. And then we get to pick between the two different call path types. So when you buy a location from us, you get two choices. You get our subscription call pass, which include a whole bunch of minutes bundled with it, so you're not paying per minute. Uh, for most businesses, they see it kind of as unlimited calling because it, it covers most normal usage, but it's not, we don't call it unlimited anywhere. It is truly a uh, subscription based. So the way it works is each of these call pass, these subscription call pass you buy from us come bundled with 3000 minutes of US and Canada calling. So if you buy 10 of them, those 10 call pass get to share 30,000 minutes and then you could burst per minute charge after that if you wanted to. Or you can buy just per minute call pass where you don't pay per month for the call path, you just pay for every call you place per minute. So for example, if we pick the call pass subscription, we can pick how many we want. So if we pick two here, we're gonna be able to make and receive two calls at a time and not have a per minute charge for most users because it's gonna come with 6,000 minutes. And then we pick what our subscription type is. So if we do a month to month, which means you can cancel at any time, we'll see those two call passes, $49.98 a month. If we commit to a 36 month contract, we'll see that goes down to $35.98 for the two of them. So $17.99 a month per call pass. So you get to pick uh, 12, 36 or month to month. We'll go into next. We're gonna give this a name. So we'll call this webinar test. We can turn on SMS and MMS. So inbound SMSs are free. You pay for all outbound SMS. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it on. We're gonna enable international calling because we wanna be able to call international numbers. This is, again, you pay per minute on all international calls. And then this concurrency bursting. So in the step before we bought those two subscription call paths, this is saying, yep, I bought those two and those are gonna come bundled with the, the 6,000 minutes and you know, for normal business usage, that's basically unlimited. Um, but there are times I need more than two calls at a time or I'm gonna need to burst beyond those 6,000 minutes. So we can enable concurrency bursting and pay per minute for those rare times that we need to go above the two call packs. Uh, we provide an address for this location. We hit next. Now we can start buying phone numbers in uh, the US and Canada right from our portal and also toll free numbers. So we'll pick a state and a rate center and we'll see all the available numbers that we have. And we can just start picking one or more numbers. Uh, we could buy another rate center. So I could say um, Illinois and I could pick another area. So notice these two numbers we already added, I could add another number right to the shopping cart. So I can just keep bolting numbers on. You get a free emergency service with us, um, a single 911 record for calling 911, what's called E911. So you get one free with us. We're gonna go ahead and check that box that we wanna set it up. And we get to pick from one of the three dids we bought is what the call ID for that 911 call is gonna be. It's gonna autofill in your address information from the location. If it's different, you can update it here. We're gonna hit the verify. It's gonna verify the address is correct and now we can hit next. Normally here is where you'd pick your credit card or add a credit card if you're a new customer and complete the purchase. 
So it's going to go invoice you if your credit card is going to charge the credit card. It's going to generate the new location and get it all set up that you can start making and receiving calls at this point once you connect it to your PBX. So while this is happening, give it a second. And we're done. We'll get a close button now, and we've added that new location. So if we go look here, we'll see this new webinar test is here. So I'm going to go to my other location that has a bunch of stuff set up already, my test box. We're going to view this location. And we can see information. So every location gets a unique ID number or account number that you use if you're porting numbers or contacting customer service. Uh, there's a name and description. You can edit that at any time and change that. And then there's the physical address that's used for taxation purposes for this location, which you can update at any time too. We can see the start date of the plan, and it's a month to month. This one was started on uh, January 2nd, 2020, and it's billed the 24th of each month. We can pick who the primary contact is for this location. So if we ever need to reach out to someone about this specific location, we can pick, oh, we can hit the edit button. We can pick from any of our contacts who the primary contact for this location is. We'll see for this location that we've got, um, we'll skip this section for one minute. You'll see that we have one of those call pass subscriptions on this location. We have enabled international calling with three call pass and we've set a $10 a week limit. So we don't want to spend more than $10. So if you, if you are on outbound international calls and you're, in that call is going to take you over $10, it's going to stop any future calls from going out. So it's for fraud protection. And then we can see we have bursting enabled. So we've got that one call path that we don't pay per minute included. Then we've enabled another 10 that we're going to pay per minute on, but we want a $75 a month limit on those. So it's not going to let you go beyond $75 in meter calling. And all this is editable, so we can hit the little edit icon, and we can adjust our metered services. We can say, ah, for metered, we only want five, and I want my monthly li limit to be 100, or maybe I want it to be 50. If we try to go over 100, it's going to say you can't. And if you notice in the little help here, it says, if you want to go above 100, click this link here, and you're going to have to fill out some information about your company for us to go verify more information to give you more than $100 a limit. And then same with that weekly international. You can go up to $10 a week. If you want more than that, you have to fill out this form and the accounting team will do some verification with you. But you can change this at any time to be whatever you want, up to your limit. Now, notification. So back up here under balances, we can see we have 3,000 minutes that are included with that one call path, that call, uh, subscription call path. We've used a, 11 of them this month. We've got 2,989 minutes left. Metered, we've used 75, or we've set a limit of $75 a month. We've used zero of it. International, $10 a week. We've used zero of it. Vaccine, we have 300 minutes. We've used zero of it. And so this is neat at a glance to see your balances. But what's uh, even better than that is if we click the little bell here, you can set notifications of usage. So on metered, for example, I can say, uh, every day, if I've used more than 70% of my monthly balance, go ahead and notify me. And you can provide one or more email addresses. And we'll send a notification every day now if it's above 70%, or it could be every hour that it's going to check. We can do the same thing for that soft cap that's included with our subscriptions, that 3,000 minutes per call path. We can set a notification for international and one for fax. So it lets us set these nice notifications to be notified of usage. Uh, we've got our SMS enabled on here. On this one, we happen to bought a fax call path also, um, one of our low volume, so it gives you 300 minutes a month of faxing. And then we enabled bursting on faxing of another two call paths that you're just gonna pay per minute if you need to go beyond that 300 bundled minutes or beyond the one fax at a time. And again, you can edit that and you can change that to be as many as you want. Registrations, this is showing that currently there's no PBX registered to our four servers. 
We can set a failover. So in the event we can't deliver an inbound call to your PBX, so in this example, since it's not registered, we wouldn't be able to deliver a call to it. You can set a failover where we send the inbound calls to. So that failover can be to another phone number, like your cell phone, or that failover can be to another PBX, another location you have with us, or just to an IP address or domain name. So I could say forward it to SIP slash and then whatever my IP address of another PBX is or domain name. So that will affect all your inbound calls. We can see what our default emergency callback is for 911. And we could change that to a different one if we wanted. Because we've enabled different metered things that charge per minute or per use, we can see what that pricing is for different things. So for example, uh, if we're gonna burst beyond that one call path, you're gonna pay nine tenths of a penny a minute for inbound. You're gonna pay nine tenths of a penny for outbound. For toll free, you're gonna pay 2.1 cents a minute. Faxing has its own rates. SMS inbound is free. SMS inbound to toll free numbers, you pay per message. And then MMS, you always pay inbound and outbound. Uh, over here, we can see our SIP username and password for creating our SIP trunk to our PBX. If we need to regenerate that, we can hit the regenerate and we'll generate a new password. We also have port out protecting. So by default, you can enable all the DIDs on your location to have a port out pin enabled. So if somebody goes to port that number out, they're gonna have to know what pin you have set here. And if that they don't know this pin number, they won't be able to port the numbers out. So that's to help protect against port spamming, uh, what's called uh, port slamming. Um, so this is kind of a lot of overview. I know we've probably buried a lot. Um, there's a key code here. And this is what we're gonna focus on with our free PBX system. So we're gonna go copy this key code. And now we're gonna actually go set up a SIP trunk to our PBX. So over here, I've got a free PBX based phone system. And I've installed a module that we have called Clearly Trunking. So this module's free. You just download it from our wiki. So if we go to kb.clearlyap.com under our SIP trunking, there's a uh, configure your trunks. And for free PBX, there's a little wiki on how to use our module, how to download it and use it. So I've got the module installed already. And before we go anywhere else, we're gonna look in here and we're gonna see that we have no trunks created on this PBX. We have no outbound rules created to make outbound calls. We have no inbound rules created for inbound calls. So it's a, it's a blank box from a trunking perspective. So we're gonna go to our clearly trunking module and we're gonna take that key code that's over in the store here. We're just gonna paste that in here and we're gonna hit submit. And it's gonna go do an API connection, get all kinds of information about your trunking service and pull it into this module for you. So there we go. We see that it's linked us now to that location. That location name is Tony Test Box. We can see we have no failover set. We can even set our failover from here, just like you can in the store. So if you edit it here, it'll automatically update the store. If you update it in the store, it'll automatically update it in your module. So we're gonna tell it now to auto configure all of our outbound routes so we can start making calls. So if we click this little button, we pick which of our DIDs we wanna be as the main caller ID for these routes, we hit save. And we're done. If we go look, under trunking now, we'll see it create four redundant trunks to four different servers of Clearly AP for redundancy. And it created all of our outbound route rules. So we've got emergency outbound route created, a normal domestic outbound route, and an international route all created already. So at this point, you're set up and ready to make outbound calls. We go back to the Clearly trunking module. Under number listing, we'll see all the numbers we have associated with this location so if we look back in this location in the store if we scroll down to numbers we'll see we have four numbers one of them is routing for fax so only three of them are being used for voice these three these three numbers are automatically pulled into our pbx and we can see route two is missing meaning they're not set up in the pbx yet so the pbx doesn't know about these dids if we click this little button it's going to auto configure those and all three of those numbers now are active routing to what we call a did verification system in your PB, your free PBX system. So if I were to call this number right now, it would play back to me what number I dialed and what caller ID I called from. So those routes are set up at this point. 
now I can choose to route it anywhere else. So we're routing it to this div verification. I can just click here and I can pick any other destination on the PVX. I can start picking that one routes to that extension. This one might route to an IVR. Nope, I don't have an IVR. Um, we'll just do another extension. And if we go look in free PVX under inbound routes, you'll see those three routes are here too. And two of them are going to those extensions we just told it to, and one is still going to the did verification system. So back in the clearly trunking under number listing, the next piece we're going to do is SMS. So there's a tab for SMS. We can see two of our numbers out of our three are SMS capable. So one of them can't support SMS. And out of these two numbers, we can click on any number. And now we can start picking what users on the system are allowed to send and receive SMS from this DID. So I just picked those three users. And this DID might be other users, or it could be the same users. So now those users can actually, if they're using Clearly Anywhere or the user control panel of FreePBX, they can start sending and receiving SMS. And then we get into emergency listings. So we can see all of our dispatchable locations that we have on our location. I happen to have a lot of them on this test location for testing. And under emergency device mapping, we can see all of our extensions and we can start picking for each extension what dispatchable location they're at. So I can say they're at the Oshkosh office and I wanna use the training room location. So now extension 1004, if they call 911, we'll dispatch out the Appleton office training room location. So you don't have to go manage this inside of each user. You just manage it right in this nice grid. And there's no save button. As you make changes, it real time updates the 911 for that extension. So there we go. Notifications. So if we click on manage notifications, this is where we can manage our emergency notifications for when somebody calls 911. So we happen to have one set up already called emergency. And if we look, we're gonna send an SMS from this phone number to these two phone numbers, which can be DIDs on your system. They could be cell phone numbers, doesn't matter. And this is the SMS we're gonna send. So we're gonna send an SMS that says on and the date at and the time the emergency call was placed by the extension and what they dialed 911 and then what trunk was used. We're gonna send an email notification from info at clearlyap.com with this subject and body to these email addresses. And we can define one or more email addresses. And then we can also link to a page group that's on the system. So we're, we've got a page group called test. So anytime 911 is called, we're gonna page the page group test and we're gonna play what extension called 911. And then we're gonna drop everybody into that 911 call muted so they can listen to the 911 call and they can hit star one unmute themselves and take part of that call. So once we've created this notification, which can be SMS, email, or paging, or any combination of the three, we save it. And then we go to route notifications and we just pick which routes are gonna use that new notification. So clearly trunking, we're gonna hit edit and we're gonna tell it it's gonna use that new emergency notification we just created. And now it's green, showing that clearly trunking is set up to send notifications. And you're done. Now you've got your Raybombs Act compliant on notifications. So we just threw a lot at everyone at this point, Bree, let's open it up for Q&A. Yes, great. Okay. So there's a few, uh, there's a Q&A section in the webinar software. Um, there's a few questions here, so I'll get through these ones first. Uh, is there a concurrency limit for the pay per minute only plans? So yeah. If you buy a location that's uh, metered only, you get that, what we down here called concurrency bursting. You get to set how many call paths you want, again, for fraud reasons. We limit you to 100 by default. If you want more than 100, you have to open a ticket with us and we can up your limit at any time. It usually requires a little more credit background since metered services are all post billed where we bill you at the end of each month. So we got to make sure you're a legit company and you're going to pay your bills. Um, but yes, uh, by default, you're allowed to do up to 100 and we can increase that to any number you need and you get to set that real time and that monthly limit. Uh, is this course being recorded? Yeah, so all of these get recorded. Um, I think we already have this one up on our YouTube channel, Bree, don't we, the SIP trunking webinar? 
We do, but this has some information on sendfax.2. Okay. So this will definitely be recorded and posted by Monday. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'm being asked, how does faxing work from a price perspective? Okay, so once you have a location with us, and that location could be metered only, so you're not paying for any call pass for voice. So that's that way you can do just faxing if you ever wanted to us, wanted to with us. But once you have a location created, so we'll go look at this webinar test one that we just did, you can add fax service to it. So we'll hit the little edit icon and we'll change our plan or quantity. And we sell it two ways. We sell a low volume, which includes 300 minutes a month. And that is, I think, retails 9.99, Brie. And then there's high volume, which is 24.99 a month, mm -hmm. which includes 3,000 minutes. No, 2,000 minutes, which is about 3,500 pages of faxing. And then once you have a, a fax call pass set up, you can also do metered where you pay per minute after that to burst. But we, we require you to at least have one low volume before you can enable bursting for faxing, the metered for faxing. Just because fax, fax is expensive for us to run, uh, it usually requires more support for people that you know we've got to have something in, the, in that monthly billing to justify it. Um, so you can buy one low volume fax call path. Once you have that, so we'll go ahead and buy this one. It's zero dollars for me on this. My location's free, but once you've got one or more call paths for faxing set up, we can go down here now. We can start adding groups, what we call inbound email groups and outbound. So we go inbound email group. We pick what location it's for, so that webinar test. We add a new group, so new inbound, whatever you want to call it. We're going to attach the fax as a PDF to the email. You can also have it include a link to download the PDF if you want into the email instead or both. We can also encrypt the PDF and then set an encryption password. And you have to know this password to actually open up the PDF. So that's really important for any of our HIPAA compliant customers, meta, the medical field, where we can encrypt the PDFs when they're emailed to you. And then this is where we define one or more email addresses for those inbound emails, and we just add to list. We could add another list if we wanted or save this one. And we've added our inbound group. Then we do the same thing for outbound. This is so you can send an outbound fax. So we'll give it a name, outbound test, test. The station ID, that's that 21 character that you can program on any fax machine that shows up the top of every fax page. So you can set that here. And then here you can set up to 100 email addresses that are allowed to send an outbound fax from this group. So I could do like this. Or I could be really clever and do this. And now anyone at clearlyap.com is allowed to use this group. But if I thought I was really smart and I'd try to do yahoo.com or Gmail or any of those thousands, it won't let you. So I'm going to delete this one. We'll leave. Should delete that one. We're going to do a fake email so it doesn't mess up anything. We'll add to list, we'll save this. Now we have an inbound group and at least one outbound group. And once you have one of each, then you can go to any phone number and we can edit any phone number. So we'll hit the little magnif or binoculars and the route option, instead of routing it to the voice, the webinar test location, we're gonna route it to fax. And then we're gonna pick that inbound group and that outbound group or whichever ones we want and hit save. And now we've set up. Now we can start sending receiving faxing from that phone number. Any other questions? Can be asked, I see you have a CNAM setting there. What is that? Okay, so CNAM um, in North America, or I should say US, this isn't really a Canada thing, this is a US thing. Uh, when you call somebody, all that gets sent to the person you're calling is your phone number. Then that carrier that owns the phone number of who you're calling, they do a lookup into one of the multiples of databases out there to go figure out what the name for that number is. So we let you set what the name is here that we then push into all the CNAM or what's called LibDBs, the databases. So if I hit the little edit here, I can say it's a business, it's English, 
and then I can set, I can say what my name is. So clearly IP Inc. Then what is my CNAM? So CNAM is allowed to be up to 15 characters, 16 characters. That's what's displayed on the caller ID. So this is where you would set your CNAM. And maybe it would be the same thing. But if you tried to make it too long, you'd have to abbreviate it. Um, we let you set this for free on any number that it isn't set on. And then after that, it's a dollar every time you want to update it, one-time dollar fee to update it. Um, but on any new number you buy from us that you haven't set yet, it's free. So we just hit next, agree to the charges, which are zero for this one, and you're done. You've now stored that CNAM. Um, some carriers will instantly start using this. Others, they only refresh their databases every 30, 45 days. Like we have no control over that, but we get it into all the databases. <laughs> We also have the ability to bulk update things. So under product services numbers, you can pick lots of phone numbers and you can batch update. So if I needed to update the CNAM on a bunch of numbers, I could do all three or all 100 at one time. And we allow lots of different batch updating. Um, you can batch update name, description, the location they're assigned to, the failover, the routing, the CNAM, the port out pins. Um, lots of different things you can batch update. Okay. That is it so far, Bree, for questions. Okay, great. Thanks, Tony. That was so informative. No I'm going to just take over screen sharing again from you and go back to the presentation. Yep. So I wanted to mention, everyone, that we put a case study up online on our website, and it is around a company called Dancing Pen Publications. Check it out. It's a really great example to understand real-time benefits to a business that migrated to SIP trunks, a small business that really needed global reach and presence but yet reduce overhead and costs. So fantastic read. You can find that on our website under success stories. And I just want to thank you so much, Tony, for joining me today and doing that awesome demo. Without a doubt, we have one of the most feature-rich SIP trunking platforms on the market today. And as Tony mentioned, it is constantly evolving being enhanced. We send monthly updates to all of our SIP trunking customers of new features and new enhancements to make sure that you're aware and you can take advantage of those new features. There's no better way to give it than to give it a try. So feel free to reach out to me, Tony, Sales. After this webinar, we can help get you set up with a free trial so you can test and use the stuff that we talked about and Tony demonstrated. And Last, I just want to mention that we have a training class coming up. Anyone looking for some training on free PBX systems, it's happening in June next month. This is being offered to partners and customers, system administrators, and agents alike. It's taking place in our headquarters in Appleton, Wisconsin. Great opportunity to network and learn the leading open source platform globally. You can check out details of this training course and the promotional offerings on our website. Uh, we are also going to be an exhibitor and sponsor of this year's Miami IT Expo happening in Florida. So pumped about this event. If you're interested in attending, we would love to see you all there. You can register and save 25% off the registration fee by using clearly IP25. Come say hello. We will be at booth 452. We're giving away an amazing travel backpack and doing a lot of exciting stuff at the show. And lastly, if you need a partner that has got that professional training and hands-on approach and support for partners and, and customers alike, feel free to reach out to us to learn more about our solutions and all our training platforms, including all our webinars that we're running. I want to mention that we've got some really exciting product launches coming up shortly here, starting in June. We've actually got three on the roadmap for June, July, so definitely check in and see our webinars and our classroom and training events happening on our events page on our website. So that is it. I know it was a lot of information in a short amount of time. We covered what SIP trunking is, why businesses should be using it, how it works. I hope you found it informative and useful. Thank you again, Tony. And everyone, have a fabulous day.
Have a great day, Tony. Thanks. Okay. Bye-bye.